In the beginning of the year, I knew only two things about myself. I wanted to go into the medical field, and I loved working with children. And I decided, you know, I want to help someone that can't necessarily help himself or herself. And so in December, I proposed a project, you know, something that could last not just a few months of my senior year. I wanted something to impact for a lifetime, something I could always remember. And in that moment, I knew I wanted to help children. That was my ultimate goal. But I had no idea where to begin or who to even ask. And then I realized the answer was right in front of me the entire time. My 11-year-old little sister, Emily. It wasn't necessarily her that needed help, but our relationship. Our relationship consisted of constant aggression towards each other. We lived in the same household, but never communicated. And this was something I didn't want to go on. I wanted to change. And I realized I love my sister very deeply, but I did not love the person she was because I had no idea who this person was. I would die for a complete stranger. But I did not know how to begin to interact with my sister. It was a complete blank slate between us, simply hostility built up over years. And so on New Year's Day, I proposed this. I would volunteer at Longfellow Elementary School with other students. I would realize, what is it that makes me connect with other children so easily when it's so hard for me to begin with my sister? The first day at Longfellow, I worked with two little second grade girls. And man, they did not give a care for what I had to say. They were all talk, no work. The first 10 minutes of, their, of the, my time with them, I realized that little eight-year-olds have a lot of aspirations. I learned about their life, their fears, their goals, how one of them was going to become president in a few years. It was just all over the world. And after I allowed them to tell me their life story, after I got to know them and they got to know a little bit about myself, it was only then that they allowed me to provide them with some of the knowledge I have. It was only then that I was allowed to tutor. And so we began learning, and it was English, and they just they didn't have much of a vocabulary. And I realized, you know, why not connect some of what they, they've told me about themselves into the vocabulary? And it worked. Knowing something about the children themselves allowed me to make an easier connection with them, allowed them to let me in. And so I decided, you know, why not try this with my sister? You know, why not just be quiet for once in my life and hear what she has to say about herself? And so we went to my room once I was home, and for f several hours, I sat in complete silence with my sister. I did not utter a word. She told me about her goals in life, about her school, about her extracurriculars, and what she wanted to become. There was so much I learned about her in just those few hours, something I just did not know from someone that lived in my house for, what, 10 years now, with me actually accepting her. And so we stayed up way past her bedtime, which in my opinion is the best way to form bonds with a sibling, rebelling against your parents. <laughs> and so we decided to call the Sister Sisters Night. And over the past few months, we've been having this night every once in a while, you know, whenever she's not busy with her schoolwork or I with work as well. And I really enjoyed this. And every time, you know, a new connection was added between the two of us, and I deeply enjoyed these connections. But there was nothing like the first time we did this. It was the first time I'd seen her carefree and happy around me, not just arguing about me and being annoying, as she always was to me. And she told me about something. She told me about something that she always told me, but I just never paid attention before. She told me about a comic book she'd been doing. And I was like, OK, you know, I'm going to see some stick figures. You know, got to be prepared to lie about her, how it's really pretty. And so she showed me her work. And it was pretty amazing. You know, she is a good artist, surprisingly enough. And she told me how everyone at her school loved her work. Everyone, of course, of there was this one little boy who just refused to look at the work did not pay attention, always was separated. And this little boy kind of reminded me of the research I was doing. It was based on teachers, you know, how teachers have a lot of work to do with students, you know. They have to try to teach everyone. They can't focus on the individual at all times. And this kind of hit me, you know. Teachers are amazing. It is so hard for them to touch everyone and their emotional needs. And you know, I never thought, based upon all my research, I never thought I'd have to deal with a student such as this. But that all changed the day I worked with a fourth grader named Kelsey. 
I walked into the room and you could just tell right away she was a pariah in her classroom. She was just separated from everyone else and I was assigned to help her. I was her tutor. And from the first 10 minutes, I introduced myself and she just would not have anything to do with me. She wanted to shy away, she did not want anything to do with me. And so I decided, you know, why not refer back to my research? And Dr. Louis Rath said that if you can build a profile on the student, then you can know how you can help them, how to approach them, decide what they like, what they associate themselves, then you can help them. And so I did. I asked her questions about her life, about her hobbies, what she liked to do, what her home life was like. And it was when I knew that she felt comfortable with me. We were finally able to get, able to get down to the basics. And that's what I cared about, making a difference in her life. And so after a few minutes of helping her, I realized we had a lot of work to do. And through this work, I realized she was not very good at math. She had a lot of problems. But when she finally got something right with me together, I decided, you know, I can pay attention to a different student for now. And in the split few minutes, I turned around. She went to her teacher, and she showed her a problem she'd done on her own. However, this problem was not correct. And her teacher just humiliated her in, in front of the entire classroom. She screamed at her about not being lazy and that this was not what she was supposed to do. And so she came back crying to me, and she sat there for a few minutes. And I had no idea what to do. What am I supposed to do with this innocent child when her teacher makes her cry? She's supposed to be the adult responsible for her. So I decided to take a new course. I would no longer tell her what she was doing wrong when we were working together, but I would tell her what she was doing right. And we did. And towards the last few minutes of when I was working with her, she finally got a question correct on her own. No help from me, all her. And the look that she got in that instant when she finally did something correct, purely by herself, it was pure pride. She was no longer scared of telling me, you know, oh, it's wrong again. She wasn't disappointed. And I wanted to see, you know, well, my little sister, would she be scared of disappointing me if I put her in the right circumstances? And so on March 1st, I decided to take her ice skating, something she completely loves. And I cannot ice skate to save my life. So I told her, you know, I'll watch you for a few minutes. And so for the first 15 minutes, we got there, and she put on her skates, and she started skating around the little arena and the galleria. And every, every few seconds, just turn around and make sure I'm watching. She has to make sure I'm watching, because that's what's important to her, that I'm there to watch. And it was pretty amazing, you know? She didn't care at all that I was not physically with her, but that I was emotionally with her, watching her, making sure that she was there, building a type of relationship without necessarily being with one another. And that's what was important to me. And she just kept skating and skating, and I was about to leave, and the next thing I know, she sees me about to leave, and she's turning the corner, and she looks, and she just falls flat on her bottom. And I couldn't decide. That was that moment that was kind of make or break you. I was like, do I laugh at you? Are we at the point in the relationship where it's OK to laugh? Or do I go over there and like cuddle you? Or like, no idea. It's kind of confusing. <laughs> Luckily for me, she turned around and she was laughing, which was good, because I was laughing crazy. It was pretty funny to me. And so you know, I really liked who she was when I was with her. And I, I've grown to enjoy spending time with her over the last few months. And that's what's important to me. But I didn't want to just see who she was with me around. I wanted to see who she was behind the curtain. And so I left for a few minutes. I told her, I'll be back. I'm going to come and watch you again. And I went upstairs, and excuse me. And I went upstairs, and I looked down at her. And I couldn't find her at first. <laughs> But once I found her, she was helping a little girl. <sighs> once I found her, she was helping a little girl. I realized it was just some random girl that she did not know. She had no idea who it was. And she was just helping her. And it was just really amazing to me, you know. My little sister. I 
it just really touched me how me and my sister were like, and <laughs> over the past few months, I've learned that I'm very thankful to have her. I've loved her beyond the title these last few months, and they've been amazing. Thank you.